Hello there and a very warm welcome to Channels Beam. I am Victor Mathias taking over from Maiwa Ogundele who held fort while I was away. A big shout out to you, Maiwa. Gracias. Now, with the inauguration and subsequent election of principal officers in the National Assembly, the Ninth Assembly has officially been set up to begin its statutory function as enshrined in the 1999 Constitution. The question is, which way will they be heading? Can they outdo their predecessors? These and more questions are what we will be finding answers to on the program today. But before we do that, let's find out what made the social media headlines in the past week. Yes. Now, with the inauguration and subsequent election of principal officers in the National Assembly, the Ninth Assembly has officially been set up to begin its statutory function as enshrined in the 1999 Constitution. The question is, which way will they be heading? Can they outdo their predecessors? These and more questions are what we will be finding answers to on the program today. But before we do that, let's find out what made the social media headlines in the past week. For the first time since the return to democracy in 1999, Nigeria celebrated its Democracy Day on June the 12th. The day the election adjudged to be the freest and fairest was held in Nigeria. The acclaimed winner, MKO Abiola, has since been honored at the National Stadium Abuja renamed after him. Full messages. While some said it was a step in the right direction, others said it was a gag on the rights of the citizens. Well, there you go. Those were the trends in the past week. But joining us to look at the topic of the day, we have an agent of positive change, Dr. Samuel Aikomogwe, in our Lagos studio. Thanks for joining us on the program today. Yeah, thank you so much. Of course. We also have joining us um, via Skype from Abuja, um, Jafar Amojua. He is a major contributor in Africa's social media circle. Um, Jafar, it's a pleasure to have you on the program today as well. The pleasure is mine, thank you. Of course. We also have joining us from our Abuja studio, Hamzat Lawal. Um, Hamzat Lawal is an activist and he follows the money as always, all the time. Hamzat, thanks for joining us on the program. But let me just come back to you now to kickstart this conversation for us. I mean, the 8th Assembly just concluded their duty and kickstarted um, a new one has been inaugurated. But I mean, what positive change would you say you saw during the last legislative um, assembly or term? Okay, thank you so much for the opportunity and the invitation. Of course. I start by saying that uh, all life forms strive to its maximum except for human beings. Okay. The reason for that is the choice we make. So the eighth National Assembly that just ended recently, we listened to um, Dr. Bukola Saraki, where he listed some of their achievements. achievements. He talks about the invasion of National Assembly as a regret. It talks about the, health, the, the healthy relationship between the Senate and the House of Rep. It talks about the bills that are passed on education, on anti-corruption. So, how impactful education. Um, they talking about impactful, you, you really need to, the, generally, um, maybe you give them 50% because some are really not happy from the statistics. Why? From the validatory speech, the, the Senate makes it look like they've done extremely well. But what so, do you think? From my perspective, I think they've done well. So the ninth uh, Senate just had to take it from there, from there. and improve on it. All I right, let, well. let, me, let me bring in um, Jafet, who is joining us um, via Skype, like I said earlier on. Jafet, um, Dr. Sam is saying that um, he's given them some form of a pass mark, so to speak, now um, from uh, that's the previous assembly. But um, what is your assessment, and um, where do you think this assembly should be kicking off from? Uh, my assessment, first of all, I need to say that they were very prolific. And in the circumstances of their relationship with the executive, I think they did the best they could do. But Nigeria as a country did not get the best of that relationship because the, the National Assembly cannot succeed alone. It needs the executive to succeed. That's why you could see the high number of um, 
the rejections by the president. Now, the president not assented to a lot of those bills. So it definitely affected their results and their impact because of the relationship. But I don't think it was primarily because of the National Assembly itself. For the next one, uh, for the Ninth Assembly, I think they have an opportunity in that if you follow the voting, there seems to be a consensus on the leadership. Um, there's, there's also a very, very good energy in terms of the partisan relationship. The, the major political parties, PDP and APC, at least generally agreed on the, the, president, of the, the, the president of the Senate, Senate, the Deputy Senate President, yeah, the leadership the general of the House, the leadership generally. There was, there was a consensus on that. And I think that's very important because that's where you build, your, your, you need your goodwill, you need, you need that kind of goodwill to make things happen. So within the National Assembly itself, there's a consensus on the people they want to lead them, which was not established at the beginning of the last, the eighth assembly. Yeah. And then in terms of the relationship between the National Assembly and the executive, again, there seems to be a consensus because it does appear that the president and the APC and the executive got the leadership. So, so yeah, let, let me come in there now. You know, you spoke about rejections that, um, that happened during the previous um, assembly, which um, you attributed to the fact that there was some form of rancor between the legislative and the executive. Um, so now that, you know, there is going to be this cohesion, I mean, it's a consensus, like you said, again, between um, the party members. Um, if we see that, I mean, uh, what would perhaps be responsible? You know, democracy and at that level where we have the leaders of the executive and leaders of the National Assembly, they really operate like everyday human beings. It is easier. People relate better when they like the other person, when they agree that the other person um, is good enough for the position that they are, um, they are negotiating the, whatever they are negotiating from. So they, they, they're starting from a very, very good place. The executive really, really do like the, the leadership that has emerged from the National Assembly. So everything that will be built will be built on that reality. And I think so far, the, nothing could be better because they got exactly what they wanted. They got not just the, the, the top level leadership, they also got the, the, the leadership beneath that. So the only thing that will change is when the politics now begins. People now expect to get the reward that they were promised for supporting this and supporting that or agreeing to go across the party well, line. That, 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 that's, that's, that, that seems to be part of our politics now, getting rewards yeah. for the work done during um, um, elections. Um, speaking about the um, arrest by DSS, I mean, even though they haven't made known the list of people they um, arrested during the arrest, but I mean, the social media ugh, brouhaha, so to say now, for lack of a better term, um, do you think such bills, you know, that would, that would say or, you know, reveal in clear terms how free um, people should be on social media and even the press generally. Do you think that should be one of those bills that we should be having in the Ninth Assembly? Yeah, most definitely. That's essential because that's the direction of the world generally. But having said that, you know, every bill has certain things that everybody knows is inside the bill. But more often than not, there are other things that are, that are like hidden inside the bill that maybe the executive does not like or even people, the, the, the general populace does not like. I don't think, for instance, there's ever been a bill that is entirely bad in itself. But I know that we've had situations where we've had to campaign against certain bills being shut down because politicians often try to use a very, very good reason to introduce some very, very bad things into the laws. So having said that, it's good that the current assembly and the, the executive are together because the best process of getting a bill to, to become law is when before the bill, before the past bill, before the bill even gets to a point where it is finally passed by the National Assembly, before it comes to the president, they've all agreed on the content and essence of the bill. A situation where the National Assembly completely just works alone, blinding the executive, in a, in a situation where the executive has to finally give assent to what you're working on, that's not good enough. Democracy is about conversations, it's about lobbying, it's about engaging, it's about looking for a way to see eye to eye. And where you don't see eye to eye, looking for a way to compromise where you can compromise and say, okay, I'll give you this, I'll take that. All and right, let me bring, let me bring um, Hamzad, who is in our Abuja studio. Um, Hamzad, I mean, of course, a lot of water has gone under the bridge since this conversation started. But um, what's, your, what's your perception? I mean, uh, we, we already have young people, you know, in this assembly, in the House of Representatives, you know, in state assemblies. And you were one of the voices that pushed for the not too young to run bill. And 
people will be hoping that these people have character and credibility as well as confidence. I mean, but uh, what do you think they will be doing? I mean, what bills would you be encouraging them to push forward? Well, thank you very much, Victor. Um, for me, it's quite exciting and historic that we even have a couple of state assembly that uh, the, the speaker has got elected. So we have a 32-year-old who is now a speaker of uh, the, uh, the State House of Assembly. And for us, what we look out for is ensuring that their roles and responsibility impact the grassroots. Because the State Assembly is the People's Assembly. The National Assembly is the People's Assembly. We're looking forward to a bill. Particularly, let me start on uh, a regime, the regime change on constituency allowance. Because that is where the people feel the pause of government program and intervention. Constituency allowance, we must ensure that it actually work for the betterment of the people. In the past, we've seen where MDAs are caught in giving kickback, you know, allegedly giving kickback to, uh, uh, to lawmakers. This, this must stop. The Ninth Assembly have a unique opportunity to ensure that, one, they provide better and effective uh, uh, oversight, because that's their role. Their role and responsibility is create laws and provide oversight over the executive. We must ensure that we have a unique regime change on constituency allowance. Secondly, on education. The Eighth Assembly, particularly the Senate, historically passed the Universal Basic Amendment Bill. But sadly, the House of Representatives did not pass this bill so that it would now be harmonized and sent to Mr. President. I believe that now that both the leadership of the Senate and that of the House are on the same page, we must ensure that they amend the Universal Basic Education Act that give compulsory education to children. Today, Nigeria have the world highest out of school children. Over 10 million children are out of school, are, are roaming the streets of Nigeria. So we must ensure that we have a unique and strong legislation around it that is signed by Mr. President. But beyond that, we must ensure that this amendment allows for more funding to universal and basic education. Today, a lot of states cannot uh, provide counterpart funding because they don't have that resources. A lot of states are struggling to pay salaries. So I believe that if we have an amendment that allows for increased funding that goes to UBEC and then provided to SUBEP, then we can ensure that we reduce the out of school children in Nigeria. I mean, so with, with the, with, quickly, with the young people, you know, in the in the, in the I mean, in, in the assembly, in the national and as well as the state assembly, would, do you think they'll be pushing for that to happen quickly? Oh yes. See again, we must understand that when I say this, the assemblies are the people's assembly. It is the people that will set an agenda and tell their lawmakers because they are there representing various constituency. And all these constituencies are experiencing the same social vices when it comes to education. So they would now give them an agenda and say, you must amend the Universal Basic Education Act so that we must ensure that truly children access free and quality education in a timely manner. Because we are putting that agenda forward for you and we elected you into public office. But then lastly, Victor, we must ensure that the National Assembly continue to amend the Constitution to ensure that we keep reducing the age. If I am eligible as 18 year old to elect you into office because you, the law sees me as a matured person once I'm 18 years to elect whoever I choose uh, to represent my interests. I should also be able to run for public office when I turn 18 years. So we must ensure that we continue to push that 18, 18 or nothing. But then, but then again, when we look at the dynamics and the demography, Victor, I am a let resident me, of Abuja. I pay my taxes in Abuja. Let me, but then a lot of people, when you say you want to run for an office where you reside, they will say, no, this is not your state of origin. I believe that the Ninth National Assembly have a unique opportunity to amend the Constitution to ensure that what we have, what we would have would be state of residence rather than state of origin. And I believe this would unite us more. Let me, let me, let me just call you uh, Hamza Twist. I mean, you're asking for more. You got the first reduction and you want more. You want, <laughs> you want, you want the Assembly to bring it down to 18. I uh, mean, of course, it's legit. It's a legit call. But uh, just hold your thoughts. Jafed as well, who is joining us from Abuja. Dr. Sam as well as Hamza. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back in a moment to wrap this conversation up. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. We still have with us our guests in the studio in Lagos, in Abuja, as well as on Skype. But um, Hamza, just before we went on the break, um, you were talking about how you wanted this um, Ninth Assembly to do um, some more things. But I mean, one thing that hasn't quite been mentioned since we started is the fact um, that no one has talked about bills that would um, um, 
curb how much politicians spend, that is campaign funding, um, even security, I mean, and, and some of those things. I mean, don't you think this should be part of their focus? Hamza? Definitely, it should be part, part of their focus. Uh, so if you look at the 2019 general election, what we experience is what I call a political plague. We experience what we call vote buying and vote selling. And, and today, because there is no effective oversight on campaign finance and campaign spending, I believe that uh, uh, most importantly, we need to amend the Electoral Act. And in, and in amending the Electoral Act, we must put a cap in campaign finance, particularly on spending. Because we, we saw the experience after the whole excitement of not too young to run, where a lot of young people declared uh, the intention to run, then political party came up with expensive uh, 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 form to, to, to run for public office. So, so we can't enjoy the dividends of democracy in Nigeria if we continue this whole old, old habit of money politics. Um, let me just bring in um, Jafet again, um, back into the conversation. Jafet, talking about you know, how uh, money was a uh, an encumbrance to young people who were trying to who were trying to contest after the um, not too young to run bill. I mean, we've had issues of crowdfunding where people actually come, you know, on social media to ask for funds. You know, medical bills, school bills. I mean, why not bills or why not funds for to, to run for political office? There are levels to funds. You know, there are levels to funds. There's we are we going to raise two billion, ten billion naira for elections on social media? I don't think so. So. The numbers are vastly different. In the kind of money, the kind of amounts we raise for these things that you mentioned, uh, the distance between the, those numbers, you know, the five millions, the, I think the highest I've personally helped to raise in one particular campaign is about 60,000 pounds. Those are not the kind of money you, you need during Nigeria's elections. I think it's very important, really, that we need, to ch we need to change the rules of campaign finance in a way that helps. So it's, for me, it's not just about not too young to run. It sh we should also have not too poor to run. I'm not saying poor people should run for office. I'm saying you don't have to be, you don't have to necessarily break the bank or go bow before someone that has broken the bank to, to run for election. We are never going to be able to raise that kind of money on the internet, the kind of money that they use in Nigeria's election. We, we won't. Yeah, indeed. I mean, so Hamza also talked about um, the president, um, the $1 billion excess, um, $1 billion from the excess um, a crude account. So, I mean, it brings back why, what he was trying to say, I believe, is the fact that um, those withdrawals that are being done, you know, without the, without the, um, the consent of the National Assembly, I mean, how can we make our laws stringent to, you know, make th such withdrawals yeah, not yeah. happen in the future? One of the biggest problems is that there are too many loopholes that the National Assembly, that the executive used to run this country down. And the, one thing about people that hold power is that they are the last to want to do something about changing the powers that they hold. I think personally that it's criminal in a federal system, maybe not criminal, but it's extremely wrong in a federal system that the one of, one of the units of the Federation can just unilaterally take money from the account and spend it. And I think what defines our federalism is enough to make that impossible. I don't think we necessarily have to make new laws to stop the executive or the president from doing something like that. But if we have to, then we have to go ahead and make them. Because it's a federal system. The National Assembly, the, 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 the FG, the states and the local government have to participate in such a, such a situation. And the National Assembly has to be involved in that process. I have to say thank you for joining us on the program, Jafet Omojua via Skype from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital territory, as well as Hamzat Lawal, um, Chief Executive of Connected Development from our Abuja studios. Um, thanks, guys, for joining us on the program. So just to wrap this up, uh, I mean, they've spoken about some of those things that, you know, we should be seeing, like I mentioned earlier on, campaign uh, funding cap, um, security. But for you, what do you want to see more? Okay, um, for me, I think the National Assembly is a, is a hub of uh, decision-making in the country. Um, the sum of the whole is definitely greater than the sum of its parts. So they should work as a team. The individual should have a personal developmental agenda. They should, um, when all these things work, for instance, in the 12 variables, you have 66 linear decisions to make, and you have 220 holistic decisions to make. Now you need to exhaust 
using permutation and combination, you need to exhaust this decision to get to how impactful positive social change to the grassroots that you represent. Otherwise, you are just taking a linear decision of cause and effect. And it doesn't work. You talk about too, not too young to run, run yeah. too poor to run, yeah. too old to run, yeah. too pension to run. Those things are the National Assembly members, they all know all those things. But how pragmatic are these bills? It only had to come through system thinking. The National Assembly is a system and it should, run, it should be run as a system. Well, let's hope that happens. Uh, but, uh, of course, like the clock is ticking, we'll be watching as well. Nigerians will be watching. I, of course, will be watching. I'm sure you will of be course. watching as well. And to see that uh, hopefully all these things, you know, will come to pass. But I have to say thank you as well for thank joining so us um, today on the program. Uh, Dr. Samai Homogwe, um, an agent of positive change. I like that title. I kind of yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where we are. We'll take a quick break. Um, and we'll be back with the movie videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Please stay with us. Lastly, distinguished, are there, are there any further nominations? I declare nominations closed. We begin this week's most viewed videos with the election of the new Senate president. Distinguished um, senators elect. Former president. Please, can I have president. your attention, please? You can see them there. But we're going um, back to we the are plaque about to commence voting. Assembly. And the ballot box is here, so please open the ballot box in order that. Okay? Are we satisfied with that? Very good. Seal it. In relation to this Imo West election, senatorial election, our returning officer did say that he had to make the declaration under duress, and that is totally unacceptable to the commission. Up next in fourth is the reaction of the Independent National Electoral Commission to the court order on the certificate of return to the Senate of former Imo State Governor Rocha Sokoracha. Uh, we are not happy. Anytime our returning officers or our election officials are hounded, abducted, or forced to do what is not right, uh, just because there are lapses in the law, and politicians know that they can go to court and get a reward for what they do deserve. Our governors have to share police powers with the president as stipulated by the constitution. Third spot is taken by the video of a senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, spelling out the president's powers as regards the formation of state police. In section 216 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. the president cannot appoint or remove an inspector general of police without seeking the consent, the advice of the body. Taking the second spot is the oath-taking ceremony of the President of the Ninth Senate, Ahmed Lawan. I, I, Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan, do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm that I will be faithful, that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance, and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and that I will preserve, and that I will preserve, protect, Protect and defend the constitution and defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. So help me God. And the APC and uh, YPP and all the parties there agreed that we should have a, a common uh, candidate. While the most viewed video in the past week is that of former governor of Abia State back in the beat of Ahmed Lawan to become the Senate president. And that common candidate for now is Lawan. We have gone very far. I can tell you that. We have gone very far. All of us in APC, for I can speak for now, have agreed whether Lawal is bad or good or evil or anything, we are going to follow him for now. Not following him without minding the rules of the law. And there you go. Those were the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. However, Nigerians will keep watch as the clock ticks to see how the Ninth Assembly will perform. And we wrap it up on that note, but do continue the conversation. Do remember to keep sending your thoughts, comments, as well as suggestions via the social media addresses showing on your screen as the conversation doesn't end here. Thank you for watching. I'm Victor Mathias.